In 2018, I had the privilege of collecting a new microlite from Victoria and flying it 1,500 kilometres to its new home in Queensland. This video represents just one of many past and future stories. Thanks to my YouTube subscribers, without you I couldn't share my journey of flight. Alright, good night, see you in a few hours. Cargo ship performance slips quietly under the cover of darkness into the Port Phillip Bay of Melbourne. On board was my precious cargo. A few days later, the container containing four microlites from the UK arrived at Yarrawonga and was being unloaded. The aircraft would then be prepared for delivery. All mine needed was a few things attached and registration. We had the car packed, everything's ready to go. We just needed to go to bed, get some sleep. Our planned departure from home was 1 a.m. in the morning, in the dark, in the cold, and start the long drive south. We had scheduled our plans well in advance. We had to take holidays, we had to get time off work. We just needed to be ready when the time came to be able to go. The calendar was to assist us with keeping everything on time and scheduled. We had built in a few days extra as well for weather contingencies in case of non-flying weather. We drove and drove and for a while it seemed the morning would never come. But then the light started to crack the horizon and the sun rose and daylight graced the landscape. Doug's mission was obviously different to ours. He was flying to Yarrawonga. The plan was to take it easy and make it a two day trip and that he would fly to Narromine and stay the night and then just catch up with us the next morning at Yarrawonga. Our plan was to arrive in Yarrawonga the night before he did. We stopped at Moree, which is well into New South Wales, for a driving break and for some breakfast, a coffee and some muffins. Once refreshed, we chose a new driver and got back on the road. While I was sitting in the passenger seat, I decided I'd give Doug a call. At this time, he was still behind us, but he was catching fast. So he was planning now to land at Moree and have a comfort break and then fly on to Narromine for another couple of hours to refuel. From Narromine, instead of staying the night, he would fly straight through to Yarrawonga, another three to four hours flying. So we wished him all the best and said we'll see him down there tonight when we finally arrived. He was going to beat us now. As we drove, I suddenly became aware as I looked at the landscape because of how dry it was, of the drought that was taking hold on this country. These areas were so dry and we had already seen a few hay trucks. The hay trucks are carrying hay to farmers desperately in need of stock feed. Their farms were not producing anything for their animals. The drivers of the trucks were volunteering their time and fuel to deliver the hay. The number of trucks was astounding. The volume of hay on the trucks also astounding. When we arrived in Dubbo, I finally managed to get a hay truck photo as it crossed the intersection while we waited at a red light. 
Look how much hay is on this thing. We popped into McDonald's, got some coffees and stopped off at our favourite park for another driving break. A coffee and something to keep us alert as we drove on further south. Not far to go now, relatively speaking. As we drove on further and further, it almost seemed like we were never going to get there. We estimated our arrival would now be between 8 and 9 o'clock tonight. Straight to the hotel, unpack the car and get some sleep. We would be up the next morning to go to the hangar relatively early after some breakfast of course. As it turns out, Doug did beat us there. We did arrive around about 8.30pm and we did get a good night's sleep. Here's a small glimpse of what happens in the next episode. You know, we're just having no. a lovely day. Yeah. So how long have you been waiting for this particular aircraft? Okay. Friday. You should have seen Stuart's face when I told him. When? Registration.